Well, hi, everybody. This is Dear Mama Sal, and it is Friday, and it's Friday noon, which means it is time for our skills broadcast. For those of you who don't know, we do three broadcasts a week. Um, the Friday lunchtime in Pacific Time, which is this one where we do a skills learning, a learning sort of one. And then we do another one this evening at 7 o'clock Pacific where we smile. <laughs> I try to find things that will make us chuckle. And then on Sundays, we do what's called a Soul Sunday broadcast, which is a little bit more low-key, and it's just getting ourselves ready for the coming week, you know, just to regroup. And it's just like almost a meditation. Hi there, Jody. Good to see you. And so I'd like to welcome you all, and especially those who may be new um, to either watching this live or on the replay. Um, I just want to say that we always welcome new people. And if there is ever a subject that we can talk about that would be of value to you, please let us know. Uh, and I say that because... You know, it's amazing how many great uh, ideas for uh, discussions and so forth have come from the viewers themselves. And so I'm just busy working with screens here, if you see me slightly distracted. <laughs> it's always difficult for me. Uh, unfortunately, you can't do this until you're actually live, so it's an issue. Just bear with me one second. There we go. If I get the screen to pop out, it'll be even better. So I hope you've all had a good week up until now. And I know that uh, just so that you do know that um, there have been, you know, some sadness this week as well. Lauren's um, grandniece, I think that's correct, uh, actually grandnephew, uh, was born and took a breath and died. It was really, really sad. Uh, so, you know, our hearts... Um, break for her and I'm certain that all of you who know her will send her thoughts and prayers. Very difficult time and also in the same week her biological father, a grandfather died and so it's a really tough time. So I do um, ask you please for those of you who know Lauren, um, please reach out to her and make sure that she doesn't feel alone at this time because it really is um, a very difficult time for her. On the good side, uh, it's a broadcast today about friendship. And I wanted to say that uh, a lot of different viewers have written to me about how do I make friends? How do I, you know, what, what, is, what do I expect from friends? So forth. And so I thought today we'd do a little bit uh, more on friendship. As you know, this year we're talking about emotional intelligence and it's the way that we process things that's important. So I'm going to ask you a few questions about your friendships and uh, just, you know, just think about them. You know, there's no right or wrong. It is just about how do you do friendship? You know, are you a needy person or are you a giver? Are you, you know, what is your your role in friendships? I, why am I playing with my hair? Interesting, right? <laughs> and talking of friendships, um, I just wanted to make sure um, that you guys know uh, that it is birthday time for uh, a couple of people. First of all, my friend Marnie talking about friendships. It's her birthday today, so happy birthday, Marnie. Uh, for those of you who know Andrea um, or Andrea in um, Berlin uh, or in Germany, I think she's moved out of Berlin now, uh, it's her birthday on Monday. And, it, so, and then for those of you who remember Laura, uh, it's her birthday on October 5. So you know, we'll, get, we'll get to all the birthdays. If I've forgotten anybody, please let me know. All right, Jody. I will be seeing her next Saturday, <laughs> so I will try and make sure to remind. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm just saying I, I will make sure to remember to tell her, but I'll I'll send her a note. If you put it on my list of things to remember for this broadcast, Jody. For those of you who don't know, Jody is our admin, and she takes notes for me on things that we need to do. So there you go, Jody. Just remind me to wish Marnie a happy birthday from you, and I will do that. All right. <laughs> now then, first of all, I just want to make sure that if you are not already a subscriber, please subscribe to DearMamaSal.com. We do a lot of work of, and helping people just cope with life. 
And I think that would be the easiest way to describe it. We all are a group of people who just go through life and we talk about it. And when I say talk about it, you know, we, we listen to other people's stuff. We listen to our own stuff. And we try to live life a little bit better. Uh, and by so doing, hopefully we not only grow ourselves, but we help grow um, the people with whom we're in contact as well. So click the bell. Uh, which probably is over there somewhere. <laughs> it's, it's in one of the areas just outside. There's a bell, and that will tell you. <laughs> All right, Jody, is it one, two, three, or four where the bell is? All right, I have to check with Jody because I see it in reverse, so I never know which one it is. To my left, one. Okay. It, it, my first instinct is the right one. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so click the bell. Why? Because the bell will make sure that whenever we go live, you will be notified. So that's an important thing. All right. So the friendships. Thanks, Jody. So the friendships. Um, let's talk about that. I, I wanted to say, are there any advantages to having friends? What do you think? And, you know, what I'm interested in is you know, what, what do you find the advantages of having friends are? Because I think in a way, it's different things for different people. And so what I wanted to do is to make sure that, you know, you understand why you um, want friends. You know, I, I spend quite a lot of time helping people. And quite often, <laughs> I know this may sound strange, but quite often I will ask people, you know, why do they want a friend or why do they want um, a, a boyfriend? And, you know, it's amazing the things they will tell me. And, you know, nine times out of ten, I literally have sat there and said to them, I think what you need is a dog. <laughs> and they go, what? I said, well, you want unconditional love without, you know, anybody judging you and da 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 So I think what you want is a dog, not a human. And they went, wow, that's interesting. I never thought of it that way. And I said, yes, because, you know, humans will um, let you down. You know, that's part of being human. Humans will oh, – sorry, I'm just reaching for a Kleenex here. Humans will – allergies um, – you know, humans will not always do the right things. Humans will not always say the right things. So if you want this perfect person, then you don't need um, a, a spouse or a boyfriend or whatever. You actually want a dog because, you know, they give unconditional love. And it's funny how many people say to me, you know, you know something, you're right. <laughs> Hi, Kimmy. So do you, so that's the question. Are you aware of why you want friends? It's really important. And what advantages do friends bring you? Well, I'm trying to think what advantages do my friends bring me? Um, all right. So Jody says, I love having friends to laugh with. Yes, that's one of the things, to share ideas with. Yes, another great reason. All right, to get honest advice from and just to navigate life with. Yes, I think most of us um, want friends for that reason. We want to know we're not alone, all right, that people understand what we're talking about. And I am going to be talking a little bit about what it takes to, to, to make a friend. So um, now that we've got some idea of what reasons, I don't know what your reasons are for wanting a friend. Kimmy, what about you? What are your reasons for wanting friends in your life? You know, what will they bring you uh, on the positive side? And whilst Kimmy's thinking about that, let me now challenge you. Um, Jody, what about the downsides of, you know, what are the disadvantages to having friends? Uh, and I sort of gave that a bit of thought. And to me, I was thinking the downsides of having a friend is it takes more time, you know, because you, you, you need to keep in touch. It takes more effort. Um, the downside uh, would be uh, they they can they can um, 
Let me just see here. They can let you down. They can leave and leave a hole in your heart. Yeah, that, that can happen too. Uh, okay, so, you know, those are some of the downsides. Just an update there from Kim. Kim says her appointment with the doctor went well. Good to hear, Kim. Uh, and so I, I am delighted that uh, the only thing that you need is a little bit more medication. Well done. I am really pleased to hear that. Keep up the good work. So uh, the other thing, all right, it's difficult to see someone you care for struggle. Yes, that is another downside. Some friends try to manipulate in certain circumstances too. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think that's up to us um, to realize that that can happen. And by the way, um, have you ever tried calling them on that, Jody? Because I do that quite often. When somebody is actually trying to manipulate me, I go, you know, I, I hate to say this, but it sounds like you're trying to manipulate me into giving you a certain answer. Um, I hope I'm wrong in that, <laughs> you know, and, and they will normally deny it. So I go, okay, good. Thank goodness for that. Um, you know, because if you ask for my opinion, I'm going to give it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right. So Kimmy's saying we need friends for companionship and conversation. All right. So is that we or you? You see, because I think different people, Kimmy, want friends for different reasons. Yes, Jody's saying <laughs> that BS, that's before Sal. Um, Jody's saying that <laughs> Sal's full of BS, right? Um, so what Jody's saying is that previously she was a bit of a doormat to this sort of stuff, but now she calls it. And yeah, it's... All right, so Kimmy's saying for all of us. All right, so that is a presumption that everybody wants friends for companionship and conversation. Okay. But you understand, Kimmy, I asked you a question, what do you want? And you gave me what people want in general. So, yeah, that's right. So if somebody asks for your opinion, give it, Kimmy. It's okay to give it. Yeah. So that's a learning for us all. Hi, Beth. Beth's saying the advantages of friends for me is to learn how not to focus on everything I choose to do with my life, but to slow down, appreciate what others add to my life. It's not all about me. I want to tell you, Beth, that is a really good reason to have a friend, is to balance us out and remember it's not all about me. <laughs> I've got this great T-shirt. <laughs> I've got to get it. Hang on a second. And it's so funny because you, some of you know I spent a lot of time, um, you know, doing leadership things for young people. And one year, they gave, at the end of the at the end of the leadership convention, they gave me this T-shirt. <laughs> so thank you for the memory, Beth. I appreciate it. I thought I thought you'd all appreciate that. Yeah, actually, I can probably I can wear that again. I think. <gasps> How about that? I was thinking about making it into a pillow if I couldn't get back into it, but I think I can nearly get back into it again. And by the way, guess who organized this? Um, Marnie. <laughs> you know, because Marnie used to make me laugh. And I really thank you for saying this, Beth, because Marnie always used to make me laugh. You know, and I'd, she'd say something and I'd go, well, you know, da, da, da. she said, you mean it's not all about me? <laughs> you know, but, you know, and I go, apparently not. <laughs> so that is one of the things. I think it's a great reason to have a friend, Beth. Thank you for adding that, all right, to remind us that it's not all about me. It's about Sal. 
<laughs> now, the other thing I wanted to, to check, uh, Beth, there's something I wanted to thank you for. Oh, no, there was a question I had. Beth, when are you guys planning? <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason for this. Beth, when are you guys planning um, to put the Christmas stuff in? Now, I know you're all going, what? It's not even Halloween yet. But, you know, Beth is the manager of a store. And I know that if anybody knows when it's time for the Christmas stuff, it will be Beth. So just I wanted to just let you know that because we actually went into fall, in the northern hemisphere, that would be into spring in the southern. It's time for me to tell you, it's 88 days to Christmas, and Beth confirms what I already suspected. The Christmas stuff is already in the stores. Isn't that scary? All right, Kim's saying, I have long-distance friends because most of my friends have moved or passed away. Exactly, and that's why I wanted to do this broadcast. 88 days to Christmas? Yes, now then. Those of you who know me well, I don't do winter very well, so I needed to check it's 174 days until spring or fall if you're in the southern hemisphere. And for those of you who are romantics, only 40 days. Is that possible? No, that's not possible. No, I got that one. That's not right. Four months and 20 days until Valentine's Day. And in case you are that way inclined, it's six months until Easter. Yeah, exactly, Jody. Well, that's why I always do the countdown, all right? It's to remind you all we've only got 88 days until Christmas. All right, so uh, the other thing I wanted to get you to realize is that your need for friends changes quite a bit. Uh, how many of you noticed that you needed more friends in your 20s than you did in your 30s? And or your 40s, or your 50s, or your 60s. And by the time you're my great age, uh, you know, in your 70s, you know, your, your friendships are very different. And I just want you to know that that is normal. Wow, Kimmy's saying there's a chance that we will get snow and really cold here this weekend. Just remind everybody, Kimmy, where are you so that they, they know to stay away. <laughs> yeah, I want to tell you it's a beautiful uh, early autumn day here. The sun is actually shining and it stopped raining. Yay. Uh, I must admit that I, I did bring in my uh, some of my outdoor furniture. You're in Wyoming. Yeah, well, then, you, you, know, <laughs> you know, I can imagine that that can get pretty chilly there. So... Hi, Marie. We're talking friendship, and I wanted to just get, ask you all to give a thought for a moment. How did you get the friends you currently have? All right? You know, you've, you've probably got this, you know, some of you got a lot, some of you got a few. How did you get the friends that you currently have? I, I'm wondering, you know, did you take a risk and, and, and go out and do something where you met this person? Or, you know, did you, did you have to trust a little bit? Did you have to make an effort of any sort? You know, think about those things because unless you have got people lined up outside your front door going, hi, I'd like to be a friend, you're probably going to have to do something, <laughs> you know, to get a friend. Yeah, they, they don't magically appear. Um, you're probably going to have to do something. And so, it's interesting that Kimmy mentions, mentions online friends. How many of you have noticed that you probably got more online friends today than you have real ones? When I say real ones, but in real life ones, I'm not suggesting that the friends you make online are not real. Oh, Jody's saying that she believes that her friends are sent from uh, above, you know, but from God. So that's interesting. All right, Marie is saying, in real life, I have two friends, and they're my best friends. My one friend I've been friends with for eight years. We went on a junior dance team. My other friend I've known for seven months. I just said hi to her in class. All right, Marie, that's a risk. 
to say hi to somebody because you risk possible rejection. All right, so Kimmy's saying the way that she uh, met her friends was she went to a community uh, county cooking class. All right, another risk, went out, you know, got outside the door, went and did something, and then met people. So that is the thing I want to tell you, that please do not sit at home for those of you who are going, I don't have any friends. Well, if you ha don't have any friends, it means you haven't tried. You haven't made an effort. I, I think I've got to say that. Um, if you haven't got any friends, then, you know, the person you need to look at is you because friendship starts with you. If you're not friends with yourself, you're, not, you're sure as heck not going to be friends with other people. Unless, of course, how many of you have noticed this? Some people don't want friends. They just want people to, to, to cry with. And, you know, it's really funny because people will, will contact me and ask for input. And, and I go, listen, if you're looking for sympathy, go to your other friends. You know, if you're looking for help, I can help. Do, do you understand the difference? I won't do that to my friends. I, I you know, I may, I may just go, hey, that's, I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm not going to spend three hours um, listening to the bad stuff because that's not helping. All right, so Beth is saying, I need less friends now, but more quality friends. There you go, all right? I can identify quality friends better now. I don't look for acceptance from them as I had in the past. <laughs> Some, <laughs> you know, <laughs> as in I have some to be considered normal, just be me now. Yes, you, you want people that accept you for who you are. Um, and some of them you met in the library, in stores, or festivals. Yes, you've got to get out to, to make friends. Marie is saying, my sister has been sad because she's been having a hard time making friends in college. But I told her, it doesn't come quickly. It's a lot of people in college, they're there for education, and a friend will find her soon. Yeah, but I do think that, you know, if you've got a, a friend at college, or if you've got somebody that you know is at college, my advice always is to somebody who wants to find friends in college, look for somebody who is on the outside, not in the in clique. You know, look for somebody who's on the peripheral um, that needs a friend. You see, the greatest way to find friends is to find someone who needs one. All right, Kimmy. All right. So Kimmy's saying that's very true, Beth. It's hard to get good friends that don't judge or gossip. All right. So we're going to be talking about yeah, you, you have to, not have to, but one of the things that, that qualifies friendship level to me, and I'm going to be talking about those different levels, is the amount that I can trust you. All right. And I, I want to talk about the fact we have different levels of friends. It's very important. All right, so just let me ask you something. Yes, Marie's saying, and that's what I told her. I said, if you see someone sitting far away, then go sit next to them and say hi. Uh, and, you know, that's a great thing. You know, great if, if they're at college, you know, whenever they go to a meal or whatever, look for somebody sitting on their own and, and ask if they can join in. Absolutely. Look for somebody who needs a friend. Uh, they will be so grateful. And, you know, that is the whole thing, isn't it? Um, I, I remember a chiropractor telling me that once. Whatever it is that you want in life, try giving it. All right? So if you don't think you've got enough love in your life, give some. If you don't think you've got enough friends, be one. If you don't have enough compassion, increase your compassion. You know, it's 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 really interesting how that reversal works. And I, you know, I went many times and thanked that chiropractor for that very short little bit of advice that has really helped me a great deal. So if ever I'm feeling, you know, oh, it's not fun, and I don't have any friends, I go, yes, I do. I have lots of them. <laughs> By the way, if you want more, get out of the door. Go do something. And, you know, because what I do know is... Finding friends is not easy for anybody, all right? Because we run the risk, we have to trust, and because we have to make an effort, okay? Every one of you who is part of Dear Mama Sal took a risk. You had to trust me at some level, and you have to make an effort to be here, and I am very grateful for your friendship. 
Yes, Jody's saying, I've been blessed to make friends quite easily, but it's been a struggle since I've been basically basically homebound for a decade. Yes, and Jody, you know, you and I both found out that, boy, when you get sick, it's amazing how many friends, you know, suddenly aren't there for you anymore. So the question I have now is, are your friends, when you look at your friends that you have, are your friends younger, older, or do you have a mix of friends? Uh, at my age, <laughs> the older one is, the older category is, is getting very small, right? <laughs> but I've always, I've always had friends younger than I am. And I am so grateful because I think they keep me young. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm not having the same conversations as I would be having with older people. I, I have, um, you know, very interesting conversations with young people. I, I, I really think that that has been very important to me. And by the way, um, for those of you, you know, who know, for example, you know, my brother, Jeff, big BBG, big brother Jeff came to visit for a week. And he is older than me by three, three years. And, you know, it was really interesting to me, <laughs> you know, how different it was talking to somebody of his age, even though he is a very active 75-year-old. All right. All right. Marie is saying, my two friends, one is six months younger than me and the other is three years older. Okay. So you've got a balance there. And Jody's saying equally mixed in her case. All right. So you've got some that are older, some that are younger. I must admit that for all my life, when I was younger, I always had much older friends. Um, I, I, you know, I found the, the, the conversation with older people much more interesting than, you know, I wasn't interested in, I don't know if any of you relate to this. I wasn't interested in the superficial stuff. I'm still not very interested in superficial stuff, quite honestly, as you know. Um, and so I think when I was in my, um, earlier years, I, I always found the conversation with, with adults much more interesting than children. Yeah, Kimmy's going, she has more older friends. All right. So um, I, I was looking at some of the downsides of, of, of having friendships. I was thinking, and just so we can re go over that again, it definitely takes more time to have more friends. Would you agree? Yeah, Marie is saying, I agree with you, Mama Sal. I was always friends with my mom's friends. I still am. I never liked associating with those of my own age when I was younger. There was too much drama. Yes. And by the way, how many of you have noticed you're not looking for the drama friends anymore? You know, it's like, no. Uh, I, I choose not to have that much drama in my life. Or you limit the amount of drama. I, I love, um, you know, we've got a viewer called Linda, who, who whenever anybody is being dramatic, be it in her family or, or you know, in her friendship, she goes, you've got 10 minutes. You know, I'm going to let you be dramatic for 10 minutes. Um, you know, and then after that, I, I, I don't want the drama anymore. Jody's saying, uh, Marie, I was friends with my mom's friends too. Yeah, I was, I, 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 I would sit and talk with my aunt way more than I did with people of my age for some reason. My aunt for a long time when I was in my, when I was growing up, my aunt was actually my best friend for quite a while. Um, Beth saying, I have one friend I have an issue with. I tell her something in confidence and she can't keep anything to herself. I don't tell her anything anymore because I can't trust her. So is she still a friend? Um, I think if you have compassion, yes. It is up to you what you give her for information. All right. So, Beth, you know, it may not be that she means to do that. All right. And, and that's what I've learned is to have compassion. Not everybody knows how to hang on to information. You know, when people say to me, I want to tell you something in confidence, I go, please don't. No, please don't, because I, from my experience, anything told in confidence never is. <laughs> you know, when, once you share it with one person, it's not confidential anymore, is it? 
So if you really want it to be in confidence, don't tell me, because then you'll know I didn't spread it. So, Beth, you get my point. Have compassion. It's up to you to limit what you give them. That's one of the tests of friendship. Um, I, I, what I, and, and I, I will talk about that in a second. Okay. All right. So Marie's saying my drama with friends started in kindergarten and lasted all the way till I graduated high school. I was never a fan of hanging with those of my own age. Yep. Okay. So let's. Um, Let's just talk about this in a, for, for a moment. But before I do, I just want to make sure for those of you who might be new and watching this on the replay, please make sure you follow us on Facebook, Dear Mama Sal, on Facebook um, or on Twitter. And the reason for that is I, I use Facebook as a sort of diary to update people on what's going on with other viewers. If I hear some news about somebody, either good, bad or indifferent, and I get their permission to let the 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 viewers know, I will post it on Facebook. And both Facebook and Twitter, I try to give you 30 minutes warning of a broadcast that's about to um, start. So do you find that you have different friends for different reasons? Yeah, you know, do you have some friends that you know you can laugh with? You know, you go, okay, this is this is my laughter friend. You know, when I when I need a laugh, I know I, I am guaranteed to get one with this person. And do you have some friends where you go, this is my discussion friend? You know, I, I know if ever I want to, you know, really delve deeply into something, this person is capable of debate. You know, they don't always have to be right, but they can really dig and, and they're good at research. I'm bound to learn something when I talk to them. You know, it's it's you know, it's a really good discussion friend. And do you have some? of your friends that are better at support. You know, that you know you can count on them to be supportive of you. And then, you know, be aware as well that some people are so supportive <laughs> that, that you have to be aware that they are very biased. So sometimes they're not the best people to give you input. I have to remind some of my friends, you know, I didn't ask you to support me here. I asked for your opinion. <laughs> you know, it's like you understand the difference. Sometimes they're not the same thing. Does that make sense to everybody? <laughs> you know, I love you dearly, but you are so biased, you know. Please don't always support me in the positive. Because I can, you know, if, if to me it's it's okay to be not totally agreeing with me all the time. I, I you know, it's... It's all right. You know, I, I will probably learn something. I don't have to agree back, right? I have the right to agree not to agree. And do some of you have friends for their knowledge? You know what I mean? You trust their knowledge on things. And maybe knowledge in different areas. As some of you know, I'm in the process of selling my house. And the interesting thing is that when I have real estate questions, I will ask my realtor, but I also will ask Benji because Benji has, you know, experience of being in the real estate business. You're right. And so it's like, and I like, um, I, I like having those two different areas because the information might not be the same. And sometimes, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times I've asked a question of Benji, and his answer to me is, what do you know, Don and Patty say, my realtors? And I go, no, Benji, if I wanted their opinion, I would be asking them. And by the way, I have asked them. I now want yours. So do you understand? To me, it's like I, I want to get as much knowledge as I can so I can make a decision. This is what this realtor says. This is what another realtor says. Somewhere in the middle is probably where I'm going to go. So. That is an important thing for me to have friends with knowledge. You know, I, if I if I have a, you know um, a cooking question, I would go to a certain friend. If I've got a a, a pre diabetes question, I have a friend. Right? Do you, do you understand? It's really important. And talking about that, um, if you didn't um, see the, <laughs> how many of you got to see the? Um, the vlog about my going on the suspension bridge. <clears throat> and I want to tell you that 
it was a complete stranger who turned out to be a friend that helped me with it. Because when I went to get on that suspension bridge, I was really, the, the staircase was swaying so much that it was terrifying to me. And the interesting thing was that I turned around, and you know that's not like me. You know that's not like me. I, I'm a you know, pretty yeah, risk-taking person, but that was, you know, I'm going, I, I don't think I can do this. And I turned, and I was about to start walking back up when this guy that I'd never met said, ma'am, the stairs are worse than the bridge. You are halfway down the stairs. Keep going. And I went, what? And he said, the stairs are worse than the bridge. You're halfway down the stairs. Keep going. Yeah, Kimmy, it was scary. I don't mind telling you. And the funny thing was, I, I, I noticed that my brother just you know, went down the stairs and kept going. He never bothered to check whether I was okay. I, I learned something. But you know what I mean? It was just like... You know, and but he was going hand over hand along that suspension bridge. And I was, I realized that I must love you guys a lot because I was holding on with one hand and videoing it with the other. And so every now and then I had to let go of the hand that was stabilizing me. And then, you know, and I'm going, yeah, <laughs> it, it was interesting. So I realized in that moment that that having you as friends was important because I probably would never have done that for, for myself. But I realized that a lot of you would never do it, <laughs> and especially now that you've seen it. Um, but I realized a lot of you would never do it. A lot of you would never have the opportunity to do it. Yeah, I was thinking, you know, uh, of, of people in wheelchairs or people in, you know, in some way incapacitated that would never get a chance to do it. And so that's, as you know, I, I, I love to be able to bring that to you. Okay. So think about all the good reasons um, that you have a friend. And let me ask you something. When did you last make? Oh, wait a minute. Let's talk about the level of friends first. How many of you have ever had a pretend friend? Now, what's a pretend friend? A pretend friend, I had one come up this week. Haven't heard from them in probably five years or oh, more or more. And suddenly they're all chit chatty on Messenger. But guess what? They were trying to sell me something. They were trying to get me to participate in a multi level scheme. So the thing is, whenever I haven't heard from somebody for five years and they suddenly contact me, do any of you have this, you know, my, my red flags go up and I go, why is this pretend friend suddenly so chatty? You know, immediately I am um, on alert. And sure enough, within seconds, I heard why. And then I just very quickly said, I'm sorry, I don't participate in multi-level marketing. And I'm pretty sure I won't hear from her for another five years or more until she needs something from me again. Pretend friend. Do any of you have knowledge of pretend friends? I'm sure you've all got, oh, it's allergies. Um, I'm sure you've all got your version of a pretend friend. If you've got any examples, you know, drop them and I'll read them out as they come in. All right. Then I have you know, a friend. Now, a friend takes a bit more time than a pretend friend uh, because they, you know, you're in contact with them more. But even so, um, how many of you found that some friends, boy, you have to work hard to to hang on to them, right? Um, and you know, my my, I have I I call those acquaintances rather than friends. But they're people I know and I do talk to occasionally, but it's not it's not a what I call a friendship necessarily. I know, you know, they're an acquaintance rather than a friend. And then I, I have proven friends. They are the people I call my friends. It takes a long time to be a proven friend. It means, hi Lolo, good to see you. Um 
I, it, you know, to have a proven friend, it means that you've told them stuff that was confidential and they haven't used it against you. Um, maybe they've used it to support you rather than against you. Um, proven friends genuinely care about you. They don't just give it lip service. By the way, genuine friends, you can do something to really, you know, piss them off. And then suddenly they will still be there to help you. I think that's a friend. Um, they don't need you to be friendly with them necessarily either. I, you know, I've got quite a few people in my life that actually probably don't rate me as a friend, or a high as a friend. But, you know, I, I know I would always be there for them. And I go out of my way to do that when it's, you know, it's appropriate. I want them to know. They, they might not want me as a friend in their life. But I still am a friend if ever you need me. D does that make sense? So sometimes I think it's important to see friendship both ways, not just one way. Not what can you get, what can you give. And, and it's really, really important. Um, so now here's my next question. Because you are all friendly people. Um, when did you last make a new friend? Would you say it was within the last year? Would you say it was in the last month? Or maybe was it within the last five years? What do you, when did you last make a new friend? Hmm. Whatever you call a friend, all right? Understanding that the definitions are different. So to me, I was thinking about that. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, so one month ago. Okay, Beth made a new friend a month ago. Well done, Beth. Yeah, I, re I. but you know, one of the things I do know that in, in moving, I'm going to end up making new friends. Does that make sense? Just by the fact that I am moving. And by the way, some of you know that my friend Yvonne, who lives downstairs, she's my tenant, but also my friend. It's really funny that um, her birthday is on Christmas Day, and I always try and make sure I give her a couple of presents during the year, because it must be horrible to have your birthday on Christmas Day, because you, you lose out on presents. So I just bought her, how many of you know about Clarence, my cleaner? You know, I got a robot um, cleaner called Clarence, Clarence the cleaner. And I just bought um, Joe, um, I just bought um, Yvonne, Vicky the vacuum. <laughs> you know, I bought her a, a robotic cleaner. Um, so, and it's arrived. <laughs> so how many of you understand um, that that's an important part of friendship as well? I get, how many of you understand the joy I'm getting with giving Yvonne a present? And, you know, it's, to me, it's just like, Wow. <laughs> She's going to have such fun with that. And I did warn her that it probably it's going to come with Chinese instructions. So turn it on, you know, charge it, you know, for, for a, a good 12 hours. Um, and then we'll work it out from there. If you can't work it out, we'll work it out together. Because, you know, it's a bit like a computer program. Right? Once you know one, they all work roughly the same way. You just need to play with it enough to find out. So, you know, it was like, um, we can do this. Right. Now, that's an interesting one, Lolo. Thank you for bringing that perspective. Lolo is saying since her husband, um, Baba, um, got cancer, she's actually made new friends because he is ill. So that brought you into a different group of people, all right? And so you met them when he was going through chemo or whatever, um, Lolo, would that be correct? By the way, that was such a cute picture you put up with Marley. What was it that he did for the first time? I can't remember what it was, but I remember smiling and going, gosh, that's amazing. What was it that he did for the first time? Anyway, you'll should let me know, I'm sure. Um, well, Jody, it's it's just like, you know, it's 
she's got carpet, <laughs> you know, believe you me, she, you know, she'll be very grateful. What she will be horrified with, and as she was when I sent, I sent Clarence down, you know, to go clean for her every now and then. But, you know, it's like what you realize is how much hair gets picked up. I literally hadn't put Clarence, uh, I've, I've got um, laminate floors, so I can see my hair. Do you know that I obviously hadn't sent Clarence out for a week because I had to empty him twice. He was picking up that much hair around my house. All right, so Beth is saying, I'm going to admit, that's what I love about you, Beth, your honesty, right? I'm going to admit I used to be one of those friends that would not return calls or be there for um, when needed, only because of the social aspect for me was hard. I would do it on purpose so I wouldn't have friends. Being alone was easier. Wow. Um, and you know, Beth, you know, you always inspire me with your honesty. You know, that I am certain there are going to be people listening to that comment, Beth, that are beginning to go, I know what she means. It's easier to be alone. It's cheaper to be alone. How many of you have noticed that you, know, you don't have to buy presents? And da -da 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 -da, you know. Wow. Um, Beth, that, that is you know, that is so true for so many people. Wow. Yeah, it's hurtful thinking of it now, right? And Beth's saying that she's tearing up too. Well, you know, I've been there, Beth. You know, when... And, and the other thing is this, why, why would I make friends? They just hurt me, right? They just leave. Um... Yeah, it, it's, you know, it's not all good news having friends, right? It's safer to be alone for some people. Or when you're in that way of thinking. Actually, Beth, what you've probably found is now that you've got your own boundaries, it is no longer the same. Because now you realize that the people you let in close enough to hurt you, that is a choice. All right. It means that you were not selective enough about who you let into that inner circle. And even then, you know, Beth, I had a, a, a friend that I met probably 20 years ago. I met a friend and boy, I thought she was going to be a friend for life. Do, do you know what I mean? It was just like we had really interesting discussions. We did da, 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 da. And one Christmas, I was in a bad mental state and she had invited me for Christmas and it snowed and I I was scared of driving in the snow. I don't know if you know that feeling. Suddenly I got a terror going on, an anxiety attack and I didn't want to um, drive in the snow. And, and she dropped me as a friend immediately. I went, wow, interesting. Interesting. I thought that was a friend for life. And the fact that I didn't go for Christmas dinner, uh, when I knew she had other people going, it wasn't just me. Um, and that was it. I, I was no longer on her friendship list. And by the way, I went twice to try and uh, patch up that relationship. Nothing. I was only responsible for my side. And I t twice reached out and apologized for what had happened. It was over. And I went, okay, I can I can do that. Right. Um Lola's saying not only in terms of, of getting the treatment for Baba that they, they've made new friends, but also, you know, with home care nurses. Yeah. And Jody, uh, I remember that you had a home care person that you 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 became a friend to and with. So what do you like most about your friends? Let, let's hear that. What is it about your friends that you like most? In other words, 
what is the upside of having friends for you? It's different things for different people. Um, for me, it's the very my very inner circle of friends know that I that I will always be there for them, and I don't have to contact them every day to tell them that. All right. Um, and that is important to me, right? It's important to me that I don't have to prove my friendship by by contacting you every day. Yet there are other friends I've got that I do talk to every day, and it's a different relationship, all right? I don't need to talk to you every day for you to be a very close friend. And I would say... If I think about my very close friends, I that is probably something that, that they all give me. They all know I will be there for them and I am there and I but I I don't have to be in their face all the time. All right, Beth saying, I don't have to worry about what I say or do in my life, nothing to hide. They know I'm a good person and I have faults. And that's okay. Exactly. You know, <laughs> one of the things that I love about my friends, Beth, is that, right? Which is I go, well, you know, I'm not a perfect person, you know. <laughs> and if they don't like you with those faults, that's their problem, right? And you know, the I think that is what a true friend is, right? Somebody who loves you what's and all. Um, that is what a true, I've always said that's what true love is. Somebody that loves you as much in your sweats as they do when you're dressed up to the nines. All right. That, that what you're wearing doesn't affect how much they love you. Um, I, I wonder if that makes sense. So think about all the reasons you love your friends. And my next question perhaps is the most important. When did you last tell them that? When did you last tell those friends, you know, I just think I need to tell you something. The reason I love you as a friend is because da 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 Because I think people need to be reminded of what they're doing that's friendly to you. And, you know, it may not be what they give to other people. All right? So, Beth, I want to go back to that compassion. Hang on a second. Uh, I want to go back to that compassionate question um, about that friend. <clears throat> you know, I always ask people, what would you like a friend to do in, in return? All right. And, and that's an important one. Lolo, I know you're, I know you pretty well, not very well, but pretty well, and I know your heart because I've seen it. You know, you, <clears throat> I've always said about people, don't listen to what they say, watch what they do. You know, are they consistent? Right? You know, allow them the odd mistake. That's what friends do. You know, we all make mistakes, but, you know, Lolo, I agree with you. You sure learn who your friends are when you need them. Um, yeah, you also know that there, there are a lot of pretend friends who will only be your friend when you're highly successful or everything's going right, da, 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 you know, you, when you're very rich, you know, whatever. As soon as those things change, they're suddenly not a friend anymore. And, and I'm certain some of you have had that happen. Or in your case, um, Lolo, when you got, when Baba got sick, suddenly some of your friends can't cope with that. All right. They don't, they don't have the emotional intelligence to be able to cope with that. And then at the same time, understand that it's, you know, you've also got a birth coming, you right, in your family. I, I was looking you know, at the roller coaster that Lauren went through, you know, she had the death of, death of a grandfather and then the birth 
of a grand nephew. You know, one one the the world takes away one, gives back one, and then the grand nephew died within within a breath. And you go, wow, look at that roller coaster. How how incredibly difficult that must have been. And you know, it's like I know that for the next year, Lauren's going to be grieving at some level. You know, I looked at what happened to you, Lolo and Baba, and go, you know, one minute your life wasn't easy, but it was path. And then suddenly, you know, Baba got sick, your whole life changed. Well, first remember, Baba lost his job at that time. You know, you probably find out who your friends were then in a big way. But, you know, it's always a case, um, Lolo, that some people just can't deal with negative. Yes, I agree with you, Lolo. A friend is somebody you can vent to no matter what time of the day or night. Yeah. All right. They they will they will understand what a vent is as well, Lola. All right. Right. Now, Kimmy's saying, I used to be there all the time for my friends. Uh, <laughs> but because so many have used me, I tend to stay away and be guarded. You know, that is about you have grown, Kim. Because if you had been guarded to start with, you wouldn't have had the hurt that you have. Does that make sense? It doesn't mean that they couldn't be your friend. You just limit the amount of friendship. You know, I've always said if you're giving more than 50%, think about it. <laughs> so... You know, it's like I think that's where be I'm. I'm realized that being a friend is being a friend to that person on their terms, not on yours. All right, and so I am very grateful that my friends, you know, love me for who I am, even if I don't contact them every day. But they know that brown sticky stuff hits the fan. I'm going to be there. I think one of the The greatest things about friendship is that you can be there. I think that's that that is important. And I think we all need that in our lives. So today, because we're talking about friendships, if you had to go out and get a new friend, if I said to you, okay, I will pay you, you know, a million bucks if you find a friend within the next week, what would you do? You know, the, the, you know, because, again, people who tell me, well, it's not fair, I don't have any friends, I know they're not doing the right things. All right? They're not putting themselves out. They're not taking the risk. Because most of you... Understand that. And sometimes when we need new friends, life makes it happen. Lolo, you know, I look at it and go, isn't it interesting that because of what went wrong in your life, you ended up with new friends? I will be forced to have new friends when I move, right? <laughs> you know, I'm going to go into a new community of people. I'm, I'm going to end up with new friends of different levels. Some will take a bit longer to you know, go through the levels. So what I decided to do was to have a look at some of the things that many, 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 many years ago, Dale Carnegie said about how to win friends and influence people. Because I think there are some things that are really good for us to remember. Not only about making new friends, but maybe a, a heads up again about our friends, all right? How many of you agree that it's a really good idea to be nice <laughs> to your friends and to be respectful of your friends and not to criticize them. Now, there's a difference between criticizing and 
giving input, all right? If you ever say, well, what you should have done, you know, you know you're not going to make a friend that day. But to be able to say, I'm so sorry that happened to you, even if your mind's going, but what you should have done, da, 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 leave that bit out. However, you know, if they're going, I don't know what to do if that happens again, then you can go, you might want to consider trying one of these three things. Give them three or four things, you know, give them options, not criticism. Kimmy saying, I had a friend that wanted to drive, wanted me to drive 50 miles away, so I couldn't do it because of the snow on the roads. So she drove herself. She has no license. Wow. And she wrecked the car. She blamed you. Yeah, Jody is immediately coming back. Wow. Kimmy, she's responsible for her own actions. <laughs> yeah, you see, Jody, boom, no brainer, right? But how many of you have had that? The, your friend made a decision but blamed you for the decision. Yeah. All right. That's called transference, all right? They're transferring their anger onto you. They, they can't deal with it themselves. That's a transference. So let's have a look at some ideas. Now, remember that this was written many, many, many years ago. Uh, and, and we'll sort of talk about each one of these quotes. Every man I meet is my superior in some way in that I learn of him. All right, so what if everybody you meet, you actually think this person, you know, might be driving me insane, but they have a gift to give me. I just need to listen to get it. Okay? You see, if you're looking to learn from everybody you meet, you probably will. Very good piece of advice. Here's another one. Criticisms are like homing pigeons, they always return home. Right? Try not to criticize people. I am working really hard to have more compassion. I understand not everybody has had the advantage that you have or or I have. Not everybody has had that advantage of that learning or, you know, that lifestyle or whatever. Doesn't make them doesn't make them bigger or better. You know that thing about I treat everybody as my superior. I am not better than somebody because I lived in the equivalent of Downton Abbey. That doesn't make me better than anybody else. That makes me somebody with a bit of experience on that side. But then I've also been into the depths of Soweto, um, you know, against the law, I might add, to bury uh, a, a family um, retainer, I call them, a servant, in, you know, that worked for me, died. And I literally drove against the law. I drove into Soweto and buried him in Soweto, which is where he wanted to be buried. You know, so to me, I've lived both lives. Um, because I, that's, you know, I'm very fortunate. It doesn't make me better than anybody. It makes me very fortunate. However, because of that, I've lost out on some things as well that you guys have had that, that I haven't. So you see, it's all about understand that everybody has their own experience. Kimmy's saying, I had another friend that asked me for a ride to work every day for a while. And then I told her I couldn't do it anymore. Then she turned against me. I know it's not my fault because of that also. Yes, exactly. So this is about she was using you for gas money. 
So Lolo's saying for the last four years. Wow. Um, Baba stuff went on. Your mom, uh, Baba's mom. Sorry, hang on a second. Your mom, Hillary, had two miscarriages and then Baba's cancer and all my problems, but we move on every day. Yes, you're a very strong person, Lola. You're, you know, you you this, you know, you have always been the rock in the family, I think. And I think you will continue to be. All right, sometimes friends can take advantage of people. Yes, friends. All right. So again, understand there are different levels of friends. If you are my friend to take advantage of me, remember the pretend friend wanted me for a multi-level level marketing thing. And by the way, if anybody ever says to you, join this multi-level marketing thing, you'll make a fortune. I, you know, my answer to them every time is, great, show me your balance sheet. What? Show me you have made a fortune. Well, I'm not going to do that. No, exactly. I am certain somebody has made a fortune off you, but, you know, show me where you have made a fortune. And then we will talk. So, you know, to me, it's it's a really interesting thing. How do you like this comment that Dale Carnegie said? The only knowledge, only knowledge that is used stays in your mind. How many of you know that we get tens of thousands of new things cross our minds every day? But funny enough, the only ones we actually remember are the ones that we pick up on and use. All right. And Kimmy's saying about those people that, you know, are users, right? Those kind of people nobody needs as a friend. Yes, but do they need a friend, Kimmy? Do they need a friend to teach them that, that that's not okay sometimes? You know, and that's the other thing that it's not all about us, right? Sometimes we are sent to guide other people. And, you know, some people actually will appreciate that. Not all, but some will. Carnegie said that the rare individual, it's the rare individual who unselfishly tr tries to serve others. And that person has an enormous advantage. You know, to actually give to others without the need of return um, says something. I'm not sure what it says. I, I can assure you many, many, many people have criticized me for the fact that I spend <coughs> uh, um, the hours that I do doing Dear Mama Sal. And, you know, I, I was looking at it. I literally spent over four hours just doing the edits of one three-minute video, or four minutes, I think. Can you believe it? It took me an hour per minute to edit. That's not upload and uh, processing it or uploading it or doing all that just to do the edit took me four hours now and people are going why would you spend that time thank you for the bless thank you for those of you who bless me on the sneezes <laughs> it's okay <so kind. laughs> but you see my friends know that's who i am that i will do that because i've done it for them i will spend an inordinate amount of time doing stuff for them without any expectation of return. You see, it gives me pleasure. I'm a very selfish person. It gives me pleasure to be able to help people. Feel free to criticize me for that. Carnegie said the only way I get you to do anything is by giving you what you want. You know, when you think about that, I was thinking, wow, that, that is so true in life, right? These quotes came years and years and years ago, and they're so relevant today, all right? If you think about all the YouTubers, all right, 
Why do you follow some and not others? Think about that. And the answer is because they're giving you something that you want. And why do you stop following them? Because they're no longer giving you something that you want. Maybe you've moved on. Maybe, you know, they're not giving you the words that you wanted anymore. Um, and so, you know, it's it's you can see that that is true of life, right? That people, if you give them what they want, I know that the very good friends I have, I give them what they want, and it's called the rock, right? They know in good times and in bad, I am going to be the rock, right? Uh, in good times, uh, I will probably be the person that is grounding them, and on bad times, I will be, you know, I'm here. You might not need me, but I just need you to know I'm here. And to me, that is very important for us. And also, I know it's very important. I ask my friends, I don't know if you do, I ask my friends, why do I make a good friend to you? You, you, know, you're, you're, you, you know, it's not that you tell me that, but your actions tell me that. So why? And do you know what most of them say? It amazes me. Most of them don't say because I'm a kind-hearted, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. They say because you tell the truth. And I go, what? Yeah, Sal, if ever I ask for you an opinion, I know I'm going to get the truth from you. And, you know, most people don't have the sphericals to tell the truth. Think about that, right? They appreciate the fact that I tell them. And I will say, look, I could be wrong on this one, but I think da 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 da, -da. This is my opinion. But check it out with your other friends that you trust as well. You know, but quite honestly, this is, and this is why. And I will I always add, and this is why. Because it's very, very important. Um, now, this is, to me, the one thing that Carnegie said that I latched onto big time, way back when, when I first started uh, reading anything to do with Carnegie, he said, a person's name is to that person the sweetest and most important sound in any language. I'm going to read that again. A person's name is to that person the sweetest and most important sound in any language. So when you're writing an email to somebody, every now and then drop the person's name in, right? <laughs> you know, uh, if you think about it, hearing your name is so important, all right? And so even, and, and you know, I'm thinking about concentrate on that for a year, all right? Because I think, quite honestly, it is one of the most important things I learned from Carnegie. Use people's name. How many of you have noticed that during the broadcast, I, I, I work pretty hard at making sure I, I name people by name as long as I know I can, all right? And if I'm not sure that I can name that person by name, I will say a viewer has said da, 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 da. But to me, I know how important it is to use your name, Kimmy. <laughs> um. You know, it's a, it's a, the number one rule of, of being polite is to use somebody's name. And what amazes me, use the name that people want to be called by. All right. It's, it's really funny that um, 
I still have people in my life that call me Sally. Now, I don't know about you, but that's really weird. And they are people that have known me for years, and they still call me Sally, although 99.9% .9 of the world calls me Sal, and I prefer that, but they consistently call me Sally. And they are people that really care about me, but they cannot shift off that position because to them it is impolite to shorten my name. And I'm going, it's my choice to shorten my name. It is not impolite if it's my choice. Never mind. So do you understand that every time they call me Sally, I go, right. <laughs> yes, it's interesting, isn't it? Kimmy, I didn't know that you were Kim E. I, I started calling you Kimmy a long time ago. And you never stopped me, so I knew it must be okay. And now your name is Kim E. Isn't that isn't that amazing? Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. So interesting. All right, so how about this one? Success in dealing with people depends on a sympathetic grasp of the other person's point of view. All right? The other person's, it's, you know... <laughs> All right? It's not all about you. It is about, let me hear the other person's point of view and let me work hard to understand it. It's okay to say, hey, I hear you. It's interesting because I would have seen it a different way, da, 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 but I understand that where you're at, this is how you see it. So success in dealing with people, and that's making friends, all right, depends on a sympathetic grasp of the other person's point of view. And this, as you know, this next one that's coming up is another one that I really took very seriously. Pay less attention to what men say. Watch what they do. Now, men, understand it was written a long time ago. So let's put it in today's language. Pay less attention to what people say. Watch what they do. Don't tell me you love me. Show me. Okay? Uh, Lolo, right? Don't tell me you care about me. Show me. Jody, how about don't... Tell me that you understand illness. Show me. Or don't tell me that you want to see me walk again. Show me. All right. By the way, big round of applause. Jody has not only started walking again. So proud of her. Not only lost over 100 pounds, not only has started walking again. Little, how, how many steps are you up to now, Jody? But I actually asked her, can you stand to cook yet? You know, in other words, can you go to the kitchen and stand and cook something yet? I asked that question today, and she said, yes, she cooked an omelet the other day. You know, all of these things, you're up to about 110 steps. I don't care. I don't care how anybody judges that, Jody. That is a celebration to me, all right? Because that's 110 steps more than you probably were doing a year ago. And to me, I need you to know that this is so inspiring, that you made the decision to stop dying and start living again. Um, you know, and look at what you've done. 
And Jody, I want you to know how much you inspired me in that. Wow. And Kimmy is saying that walking outside is almost for over a year now. That is amazing. I want to tell you something that, you know, it really inspires me. Some of you remember that a few weeks ago I was telling you that I've got a problem lifting my one leg uh, into the Jeep, you know, to, to, to actually pull up my left leg into the Jeep it was difficult and painful. <laughs> Jody's saying, thank you for inspiring me to push myself. I gave up excuses. Yeah, Jody, and you know, the same thing, all right? I, I sat there going, that leg doesn't want to work. So what are you going to do? Let it win? All right, so yes, Kimmy. Kimmy's saying, I will do exercises inside now. Uh, Kimmy, did you see yesterday's vlog where I talked about my new exercise machine? Because I, you know, I put my exercise machine away showing it's been away for six months, people. I need my exercise machine for the winter. So I worked out, forget the excuses. What are you going to do without your exercise machine? And I built myself a new one. Okay, have a look at the vlog I did on, what was it called, Jody? Tips of the day or? Hmm. Hang on a second. I have to look at that. Ah. Anyway, it was the one the one that went up yesterday. And you will see um, that I found a new way of doing exercises. And it is amazing. It has increased. Yes, you want a stair climber? Saving money. Okay, thank you, Jody. All right, let me show you. Let me show you. Do you have a staircase in, in, in your home or your building? Because if not, um, watch the video, because in there I will show you my new stair climber. And let me tell you how successful it is, Kimmy. Remember that what my problem was is I couldn't lift my left leg. You are now looking at my hip level. Okay, this is my hip level. All right. I can now lift my left leg that high. And that is in what, two weeks? because of my new exercise machine. And that's a good reason to have friends, right? They give you ideas. <laughs> yeah, Jody, you know, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm putting it onto you, Jody, is because I know that's what you did, right? You took a situation where you couldn't move your legs. Um, because of the lymphedema, and you started doing leg lifts to help me, and you slowly did that. By the way, I also need to tell you that I have all but got my um, swelling of my feet under control now because of Jody, right? Because I kept thinking about Jody and lymphedema and what was the what was the answer for her? The answer for her was two things. None was the compression that, that forced her um, muscles to work and move some of the liquid. And the other was doing the exercise. Well, here, guess what? I went, I can force that. Um, <laughs> you, you like my Canada shirt. Thank you. Do you know something? Jody, that's amazing you say that. I didn't know that this would fit me. It's um, And it's like two sizes down. And I don't feel that I've lost weight necessarily. But, you know, maybe I'm starting to. Um, but anyway, what I wanted to say is if Jody can do it, I can do it too. So what I did to stop, if any of you suffer from endema, what I've done to stop that is whenever my feet start to swell, uh, which used to be what, Jody, almost two or three times a week I'd be struggling because my feet were so badly swollen. Now, if my feet start to swell, I immediately put on my massager and I put it underneath my calves. All right? And let 
let my massage and massage my calves. Then I do that for probably an hour. Then I will put my feet on the massager and let my feet be massaged. And I want to tell you something. It is amazing the difference it has made to my endema. Now, my doctor is not going to believe it. I haven't taken a diuretic since I started doing that, Jody. And thank you. One of the reasons having friends is a really good idea is they trigger you to have great ideas. Thanks, Jody. Your friendship has helped me be really creative about my health. Right? And I realize now that I was really down about my health. And I'm, I'm getting much more positive about it now. So, uh, Kimmy, understand one of the things, Kimmy, you know what else I thought about? Do you, do you remember the sailor's hornpipe, the dance? Something came to me this week while I was walking. Um, I, you know, I do these 10 minute walks quickly down to, you know, it, it takes me about 15 minutes and, and back again. Um, no, it takes me about seven minutes and back again. All right, so the sailors had, um, if you look up the sailor's hornpipe, um, think about this for a second. I'm just typing it. Um, what we'll try and do is to find, um, try and find that. It's a dance that the sailors used to do. And I don't know if you remember, but it had a lot of this stuff going on. And when I was walking this week, I was thinking, you know, I try to do things while I'm walking now. I don't care who's watching me anymore. So I will go boom, boom, and then at the back, boom, 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 as I'm walking, right? And then I will go as I'm walking. And then I will go, I'm trying to get my spine working again. All right? And then... What I'm doing as well is I suddenly realized there was a reason why the sailors did the hornpipe. Because it's exercising so many upper body muscles. And I went, wow, that's why they had the sailors hornpipe, was to exercise the sailors when they were on a ship. Duh. Um, all right, Kimmy's saying that I've been trying to get rid of my vertigo with head exercises. Yeah, good. Yes, and Kimmy's saying she does stuff like that as well, even if people are watching me. Yeah, who cares? Let them have their judgment. You're busy looking after you. And so one of the things as well is if you can't afford weights, for example, Kimmy, in the winter, get a couple of cans of soup right? And just use your cans of soup as weights. And, it, you know, if you get that that's pretty easy for you now, you know, maybe pick up a couple of milk jugs, you know, with some water in them and see what you can do. You know, start with the quart. It's a liter of quart. I, I have problems talking American. But anyway, um, you know, start with the smaller one with handles, right? And fill, half fill it with water and see if you can lift it. And if you can, try full. Anything with some weight. Yes, don't think about, I can't afford to go to the gym. Although if you want to make friends, go to the gym. <laughs> yeah, and then recycle the milk jugs into planters. Thank you, Jody. For those of you who have not seen that vlog about saving money, I actually was showing you how I recycled my milk jugs into planters. What I do is I cut it about three quarters of the way. No. Yeah, three quarters of the way up, quarter of the way down. All right, I cut it across so I've got the handle bit, and then I turn that upside down. I stick, um, what do I do? I stick, let me think about that, uh, coffee filter paper at the bottom and then put earth in it. 
Uh, some of them, I've actually just put some holes into the, I put the cap back on and put some holes in it. It depends what I'm feeling like. Um, and so, you know, it makes a great planter. By the way, I, I bought my geraniums in to see if I can winter them in the house. You know, I keep them going over the winter in my house. Uh, I want to take them with me. <laughs> yes, Kimmy's saying, no excuse. The gym is on YouTube these days, right? So, you know, but if you want to make friends, go to the gym. Do you understand the difference? If if you don't, don't, you have no excuses anymore. None of us have excuses anymore. Whatever it is we want to learn, whatever it is we want to do, right? Right, now how about, how many of you need to remember this one? I do. There is only one way to get the best out of an argument. That is to avoid it. Right? I am doing whatever I can these days to avoid arguing with people. I will hear that we have a different point of view and I go, hey, how about we just agree to disagree? If you'd like my point of view, I'll gladly give it. But other than that, you know, let's agree to disagree on this one. And I move on. And if they're going, yeah, but you're wrong, da -da, I, perhaps I am. Perhaps I am. Kimmy's asking me about my move. Well, keep your fingers crossed, Kimmy. The contract says that the buyer, they, I only have one subject left that they need to clear, and that is that they have to sell their house by the end of October. And we are nearly at the beginning of October. Um, if they don't sell their house by the end of October, they have the right to walk away from the deal. Is that scary? Yep. But is there any point worrying about it until it happens? Nope. I'm busy working on plan B, C, and D in case that happens, but I'm not you know, going to worry about it until it gets there. Now, you do know that I'm running out of money. Um, but the good news is three properties in my area, in my block, three, three properties have sold recently. So I think the market is beginning to have an uptick at last. All right, so here's an interesting thing. Um, Carnegie said that three quarters of the people you meet are hungering for sympathy. Give it to them and they will love you. All right. Give it to them and they will love you. In other words, if people do need sympathy, it's okay to give it to them. Just don't spend hours on it. You know, it's okay to say, I'm so sorry to hear that. How can I best support you? Move on to something positive. How can I best support you? All right. And you'll be amazed how many people will say to you, just keep doing what you're doing. I go, okay. All right, so Kimmy, here's a quote from Carnegie about, um, is what the same house, Kim? Just so I understand your question. You're saying, is it the same house? I'm just not sure I understand the question there. All right. Uh, ask yourself, what is the worst that can happen? Then prepare to accept it. Then proceed to improve on the worst. Oh, you're asking me, is that house that I showed you still available? Is that what you're asking? I'm touching the wood on my chair. At the moment, yes, but here is my thinking. Yes, it is still available. They've had a couple of people bite on it, but nobody has actually bought it yet. 
So if I get the subject, when I get the subject cleared of mine, I will immediately go back and put another offer on that house. By the way, they've dropped the price. So that's interesting, more likely to sell. How many of you now understand, because of the work that we've been doing on our emotional intelligence, that happiness does not depend on any external conditions? It is governed by our mental attitude. How many of you can see that clearly now, that maybe didn't see it before? All right, That our happiness is our responsibility it's got nothing to do with other people. If you're not doing things that make you happy, look at yourself. If you don't have enough friends to make you happy and give you support, look at yourself. You know, this is about let's give up the excuses. Let's stop the yes, I would have done, but, um, you know, all those things. Beating up on yourself is not being a friend to yourself, is it? But I will tell you something. If you can learn to not give excuses, you will be happier. It's a bit tough at the beginning. <laughs> it's a bit tough at the beginning. Um, but it actually is amazing how much happier you are. And Carnegie said, one reason why birds and horses are not unhappy is because they're not trying to impress other birds and horses. Well, have you seen a peacock, <laughs> Mr. Carnegie? <laughs> I think they're trying to impress other horses, birds, and people, myself. <laughs> or how about some flowers? If you've ever seen a bird of paradise flower, you're going, that's pretty impressive. Or how about a passion fruit flower? Have you ever really looked at a passion fruit flower? Yeah, that's pretty impressive, right? So I don't totally agree. <laughs> we will agree to disagree. Now, listen to how to win friends and influence people. To be interesting, be interested. You know, do you interrupt um, every time somebody is trying to tell you something? I'm bad at that. You know, if I were to increase my friendship quotient for this year, the one thing I need to work really hard on is do not presume you know what they're about to say and continue from there. Stop long enough to hear what they have to say. I am really bad at doing that. <laughs> Do any of you relate? Yeah, but you know, blah, 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 blah. and they get about three words. Yeah, but da, 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 da. <laughs> and I can tell you it's because of my passion, or yeah, I get the gist of what the you know. It's like it's bad manners. So stop it. And Carnegie said this: all men or people, that's the way. All men have fears. But the brave put down their fears and go forward. What are you fearful of this week? You know, it was really interesting. You know, one viewer wrote to me this week and told me that they were really scared to, to go to a new place because they didn't know the way and they didn't know this and they didn't know that and they, they were fearful of that and I said yes but what if you weren't afraid what if you took the risk you know how would you feel if you did it and succeeded and you know it's a bit like the suspension bridge right sometimes we just need somebody to help us give us the push that helps us take a risk but it's also okay if the other person isn't capable yet of taking that risk all right. So be a friend enough to push them a little bit. But if they choose not to go, you can take a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. And it's OK. Don't think less of them because they didn't do that.
And how many of you agree with this one? Talk to someone about themselves and they will listen for hours. Right? Talk to somebody about themselves and they will listen for hours. You know, Kimmy, I was wondering what changes you have seen that you have made. Because one of the things I am really aware of is that you have been very consistent about coming back. And I noticed that the way you're talking about things has changed. And I wondered if you can see that for yourself. And I don't know if Beth is still here, but I certainly know, you know, the changes we've seen with Beth, amazing stuff. And Beth, I think the, the amazing thing is that you are now passing that on to other people. Um, that to me is thank you so much, right? That paying that sort of stuff forward is, you know, just my dream come true. And so, you know, I look at it and go, you cannot, this is Carnegie now, you cannot teach a man or people anything. You can only help him find it within himself. How many of you have noticed that, that people are going at the right speed for them? You can give them the clues to the next step that you might see for them, but it's not their step, it's yours. So to me, that's why I try to give people a lot of options because I don't know what the right step is for them. It'll be the one that they find acceptable. Does that make sense? So whenever I'm trying to help somebody, I'm going, well, you know, blah, 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 and this and this and this, you know, use whichever one works for you because there is no right decision, is there? And listen to this, criticism is dangerous because it wounds a person's pride. It hurts his sense of importance and arouses resentment. Criticism is dangerous because it wounds a person's pride, hurts his sense of importance and arouses resentment. Um, how many of you have noticed that I will always warn somebody if I'm about to give a two by four? Uh, for those of you who don't know what a two by four is, if I hear somebody um, that is constantly complaining about something, I will ask permission to use my two by four. And that will be a bit of honesty something that I see going on, but I always ask them first. And the reason is because I want them to be prepared for the fact this might hurt a little. Right? And that's why I will, I'll always say, you know, is it okay if I hit you with the two by four? And I give people the choice. <laughs> you know, um, and it's amazing because some people, you know, have had quite a few from me and still our listeners and viewers, it, you know, but you understand the only reason that can be true is if they found that helpful to their growth, all right? And how about this very simple one? Actions speak louder than words. We know that. So a smile says, I like you, and I'm glad to see you. Um, I'm amazed. That I don't know if you saw that a bit of footage, and I, I can't remember where it was, but I literally had somebody stop me because I smiled at them. And this woman said, stop, stop, stop. And I'm going, what? And she said, do you know how powerful your smile is? And I'm going, yep. <laughs> and she said, I just had to let you know. The impact it had on me, you know, I was really having a tough time and you gave me that smile and she said, my whole body changed. And I went, I know, isn't it amazing? Pass it forward. <laughs> so, you know, do that. Every now and then walk down the street and smile. You know, some people are going to go, oh, weird, smiley lady. <laughs> I don't mind. All 
All right, now how about this to be remembered? You cannot win an argument. If you lose it, you lose. And if you win it, you lose. You can have a different opinion. Or you can say, hey, you know, it's interesting that you should say that because I heard somebody say recently, da, 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 and give that other opinion. But don't turn it into an argument if you can help it. If you want to gather honey, don't kick over the beehive, all right? Don't rattle bees, all right? They get angry. How about, how many of you have found this out? It raises one above the herd and gives one a feeling of nobility and exaltation to admit one's mistakes. How many of you have found that being free to admit your mistakes has changed your life? To be able to say, you know, I really got this wrong. Blah, 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 blah. Or I really screwed up today. Blah, 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 blah. To be able to say that when you spent a lifetime trying not to say that, trying to cover it. It is amazing the freedom that you get. And by the way, if any of your friends admit a mistake, give them so much praise that it will encourage them to do it again. Go, you know something? It takes real courage to admit that. I am so proud of you and so proud to have you. And that is why I have you as a friend, because you can admit your mistakes. Thank you. Well done. Yeah, Jody's saying 100%. Yeah, it's amazing the difference, right? How about this one? Do you believe, and Carnegie said this, people rarely succeed unless they have fun in what they are doing. All right? You know, Jody, um, when I write to you and go, it has just taken me three hours to edit three minutes of video. Do you think that was fun? <laughs> no, it wasn't fun. But you know what always amazes me, Jody, is how you answer me. That is what I find fun, is how you always remind me that that is where I show my dedication to dear Mama Sal. You know? In, in the fact that I will spend for three hours or four hours editing three minutes of video. You know, I never really thought of it that way, but you're right, right? It's not what I say, it's what I do, right? And so I'm hoping that other people will see that. Now, the funny thing is, for me to get up and do a two-hour broadcast is much easier. I don't edit it, <laughs> you know. But is it really that easy? Because Jody will remind me, I spent all week preparing for the Friday broadcast. <laughs> right? Because I forget that. I forget that I all week I'm thinking about, what am I going to talk about this week? And then what quotes am I going to use this week? Yeah, I actually spend a lot more. I, I kid myself in thinking that I don't spend a lot of times on doing the weekend broadcast, but it's not true. I lie. I'd like to admit that. I spend way more time doing that than probably most people know. I think Jody and Lauren know because they talk to me about it. All right, Jody's saying, yes, you know, it always amazes me and I like to applaud it. Okay, the, the fact that I spend the time, right? No, it's not easy making a video or to edit a video. Absolutely, no, not easy. Um, but you know something? You either are that person or you're not, right? You either want to spend that sort of time. I don't think it's easy to do tapestry, right? Yet an awful lot of people do it. And some people will look at it and go, why would you waste the time? I don't think it's easy um, running, right? 
uh, or fun necessarily. But, you know, the rewards are worth it for some people. I don't think it's easy walking a golf course necessarily. And, you know, so you look at it and you go, I think we all have a passion for doing certain things. If I didn't, quite honestly, if I didn't genuinely believe that maybe in that video, that three minutes, if I didn't genuinely believe that maybe in there somewhere, somebody will find something that they can do that will make a difference, I don't think I'd do it. Now, is that egotistical? I literally have to say that that is the reason why I do it. The reason I spend the time is I want somebody to say, wow, I never thought about doing that. That could save me some money. Or, wow, I never thought about looking at it that way. Let me try that. Yes, Jody, isn't that true? Jody's saying, and some people choose to waste waste time making the perfect lattice crust for their pie. It was so funny. Beth showed, um, um, Beth showed a lattice pie that she had got at Costco, and you know it was so funny because I took one look at it and I knew that when Jody looked at it, because I know Jody fairly well, the way they'd made the lattice pie was to put strips going this way and then the other strips going this way. Okay, I got to draw this because this is, you have to see this to understand why I commented on it. So this was the pie and it had strips going across. Okay, that's a strip of pastry. That's a strip of pastry. And then it had other strips going this way. Okay, and so you ended up with a lattice over the, over the pie. I took one look at that. And I went, yeah, I hope Jody doesn't see that because I know Jody quite well. And it's like, I know that Jody would have done this. She would have made a lattice that looked like this. In other words, she would have gone over there and gone under here, gone over here under here and then over there. So you would have ended up with a perfect looking lattice. Can you see the difference? And the other thing was that I knew that Jody would also comment on something else. The interesting thing was the lattice had been cut with scalloped edges to it. It was pretty. Now, you can do that with a pizza cutter type thing. But, you know, I just knew that that would appeal to Jody because I know Jody quite well. Oops. Yep, that's right. Um, and sure enough, right, Jody came back and said, yes, but I love the, the, the pretty edges. So, you know, you look at it and you go, I think that it was so funny, Jody. I want you to know that, the, the, you know that, you make me smile even when you're not talking to me because, you know, I took one look at that pie and thought of you and I went, oh, Jody's going to have an issue with that. <laughs> they didn't do the lattice properly. <laughs> and, you know, it made me laugh even before you commented on it, right? Or how many of you who watch the video with my exercise machine and when I... <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I put a camera to the side so you could see what I was doing. But when I sped it up, it looked, well, it looked um, almost sexual. <laughs> and so I had to put the note on there, just don't comment. Right? <laughs> it was fine when it was in regular time. But when I actually, <laughs> when I actually did the speed up of it, it did not look um, quite the same. <laughs> but I left it. I was going to cut it out, and I thought, no, somebody's going to get a laugh out of it. How about this one? Dale Carnegie said, if you can't sleep, then get up and do something instead of lying there and worrying. It's the worry that gets you, not the loss of sleep. Isn't that true? 
All right. I've quite often done that. If I'm having a, a you know a night where I can't sleep, I know that the reason I can't sleep is something is worrying me. And so I will get up and, and write, what is worrying you? And I will start writing and then I'll start noticing that I'm just, you know. The other thing is, um, you know what I've done now? I've got myself a set of wireless, light wireless headphones so that I can literally be turn over and and still hear what's going on on my television. And I'm amazed how many times I will just fall fast asleep. And how many of you have noticed, because I've talked about it, that I try in the morning to do the difficult jobs first. The easy ones take care of themselves. And you know what's difficult to remember for me? The hard job for me is to remember to be creative because that balances me. And so now I've switched my day around. Before I get dressed, I do something creative. Literally, you know, I'll still be in my jammies because that feels better. And also, you know, if I get paint on me and everything else, I can get it off when I shower. But, you know, I literally start the day going, what one creative thing shall I do today? And it can be to sign the back of some coasters or to do whatever. But, you know, I start now with being creative most days. Not all days. I'm not perfect. All right. And this one is the one I'd like to finish with today. The most important things in the world have been accomplished by people who have kept on trying when there seemed to be no hope at all. You know, Jody, I know for a fact that there have been days in your life when you didn't think there was any hope for you. And you changed that. Kimmy, I know in the time that I have known you, there have been times when you have just thought this isn't worth it. And all I can say is that you guys have a lot of character. And I need you to know that. You have character. Why? You have fought the demon. You have looked that person deep in the face and said, up yours. I'm going to keep trying. And that, to me, is what somebody with character does. They don't go, well, I would have been okay, but this happened. No, they go, you know, this is about me. I need to do something here. Yes, Kimmy, you don't give up. And in that, you need to know how important that is to your life. You are learning now to protect yourself in a positive way and not give up. I think most survivors understand that not giving up is why they're still breathing. It doesn't matter what you are a survivor of, quite honestly. But you do know that the reason you are still breathing is because you chose to. You didn't give up. And sometimes that is why you need a friend. And that is sometimes why you need to be a friend for somebody else. And Jody's saying, thanks, Sal. I had a lot of help turning it around. Yeah, you had a few two-by-fours as well, Jody. Rain? They think about that. I assure you, Jody, that I had a lot of help understanding my blood sugar. And, you know, I didn't realize that I was actually doing a lot better than I thought I was. All right? Because I realize now that I can control it a lot better. And the simplest thing, like a potato or, God forbid, a banana, can throw your blood sugar out of whack. 
So this is like that, you know, that's a learning lesson. And Kimmy is saying, I do wish other people would not give up. Yes, Kimmy, a lot of us would wish that. But some people, Kimmy, don't have that character. Right. And Kimmy's saying, I've had a lot of people to listen to and help me not give up. And Jody's saying it's a learning journey, right? The, the, the whole diabetes thing is a learning journey. It sure is. And it's one, hey, I even got to eat a Mars bar this week. <laughs> that, that's really important to me. You know? It didn't throw me too far out of whack. That really surprised me. So being friends is what life is about. And having friends is what makes life more tolerable and funnier and helps you with knowledge and understanding and growth. So be a friend to have a friend. And let's remember, how many of you would like to do more on the Dale Carnegie quotes? I think I'm going to schedule those, you know, in every now and then, because I think they're great things for us to remember, even though they were written so long ago. I think they are great things for us to remember how to win friends and influence people. And if you will, Jody, just remind me to put up a link to some of Dale Carnegie's work in case people want to read. I'm pretty sure you can get the PDF online these days for free at some learning academy, the Open University or something. Yeah, I will actually um, do that. And by the way, Jody, could you make a note that I stopped on quote eight? And then what I'll do is next time I will continue from there. All right, everybody, I am now out of here. I hope to continue to have you as a friend, and I hope to continue to be friendly towards you. If so, we're both winning. This is Dear Mama Sal saying, be a friend, and it's okay to have a friend, and it's not about the number. As somebody so rightly said earlier, it's about the quality. One really good friend by the way, have a backup one just in case. This is Dear Mama Sal saying that's like look after one another, but please, 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 the most important person to be a friend to is yourself. Bye-bye for now.